Okay, the drugs. So BG12, they give them a snappy name like that. Um, you call it if you wanted to, but that's the, uh, the, the, the structure of it, and so you can all go away and make some. And the important thing is that it has to have a reasonable mechanism of action. It's got to be a, it's got to be a good idea behind it. And here's the science part, and you can read that while I talk. I don't want to turn my back on you and read it out to you. It ought to work. It should be an effective thing. So how do you start off? What you do is a little study on MRI, because the MRI gives you a surrogate marker. It gives you a way of seeing if it does something. We heard earlier on, using the MRI, we can actually see the development of the lesion. Absolutely right. And you can see here, placebo, little dose, bigger dose, even bigger dose. Hidden down here is some numbers, pretty small numbers, just 50 patients in each group, and not very long, only a few months. But no doubt at all, there appears to be a diminution of MRI activity. What a wonderful thing. We are trying it on real people. We're doing the MRI too, but we want to see if it really works. Looking at what we know already, it appears to do good things to MS. And down here, oh, a one-third reduction. We've heard that before, haven't we? Now, so that's not exactly a, a cure, it's not an answer, but it's a lot better than nothing. And the really good news is that this hooch has been tried by lots of German people. So again, more animal studies. And uh, <laughs> oh, sorry, Klaus. And uh, over a thousand patient years of experience in Germany. Okay, and this is all post-war, and uh, so it's all very ethical. And it's a pretty safe drug. It doesn't make you sick. Well, it can make you a bit, give you a bit of tummy upset and a bit of flushing and so on. I'll show that in a moment. But lots of Lots of patient experience, and it's not immunosuppressant, so it won't give you PML, we hope. So the side effects get better. It is an issue in the studies, because they do get a bit flushed, and so you have to see them in the trials unit in their blinded assessment after the flushing goes away. We're working on it. Come back next year, you may have some better data. What else is coming along? Laquinamod, slightly more difficult to make in the garden shed, um, but if you start off with a few ringy things, and there it is, you've all got that down. It ought to work. It does something that is relevant, potentially, to immune disorders and MS. And so again, we have a smallish study, 80 or 90 patients in each group, placebo, low dose, big dose, familiar design over time, and with a larger dose, you get a reduction in MRI lesions. Again, look at the short duration, okay? So it may look a bit rubbish compared with interferon and tisabri, but what happens if you big that up over months and years? Interesting, we're doing it, we'll let you know. We have to find better treatments. Next one, teriflunamide. Sounds like Arthur Daly's friend, but nothing to do with that. And again, carefully, you want to use that. It's precursor, you want to use this. Precise mode of action unknown. Oh, well, there it is. As a clinician, and scientists can cover their ears, I don't actually mind how something works, okay? As long as it works. That's what really matters. It's efficacy and tolerability that counts. We've got 207 patients. This is the sort of design that we're using in order to test out drugs. And you've got a group on placebo. Hopefully, they don't know that they're on placebo. Hopefully, I don't know, or it biases me. You've got a group on low dose, a group on big dose. And over 36 weeks, you follow them up, and you look and see what happens. And you do an MRI scan, and you look and see whether it gets better. So here's the placebo group with three lesions, and both doses show a useful reduction, a nice reduction. It's a very familiar sort of graph. We're going to see another one looking very like that in a minute. But it's a short study with small numbers of patients. Probably underestimates the effect. Maybe there's some fluke in it. But it's a good fluke if it works on both of those and not on that. It's early data. Would I take this stuff? No, I wouldn't, unless I was in a trial. We have to do the trials. We have to get better data. Uh, so slightly more data on teriflunamide, again, showing the same old things that you're better off in these colours and that, in, on drugs and on placebo, the percentage of patients with new lesions or the enhancing lesions. So looking at lots of different MRI outcomes in order to show a benefit, trying to avoid the dreaded fluke. And in summary, we see an effect on MRI, we see a trend towards clinical benefit, and it doesn't look as though it upsets you too much, apart from a bit of heartburn and gastritis, reflux. Well, we know what reflux is, don't we, because we heard Klaus's lecture.